Hi friends, welcome back to Sarah Vlogs Thoughts and today I'm going to be doing the Racing to Read book tag which is the official book tag of the Reading Rush 2020 which of as recording and posting this we are in the middle of right now so I'm taking some time out of my day, out of my reading time to do this book tag. The first question on this book tag is warm up, a book that stretches your mind and Thinking about this one, I've read a lot of nonfiction lately, and the book that came to mind for this one was We Were Eight Years in Power by Tana Hesse Coates. This book essentially goes through and is a retrospective on Tana Hesse Coates's writing during the Obama years, um, including some of his most famous essays, such as My President Was Black and The Case for Reparations, including others. And this book was really interesting because I had read the case for reparations before and had been aware of ta Hesse Coates's writing. I've, um, I've read Between the World and Me as well. Um, I've been aware of his work for a while but I haven't really dived into it so much and also one I'm white and two you know I was a kid pretty much for all of Obama's presidency so he was elected in 2008 I was 10 um, so I didn't have many formed political opinions at this time until, you know, you get to the later years when I was in high school uh, and that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, so this one was really interesting because Tana Hesse Coates really went back on his own work and pointed out where he thought there were gaps in his work or where he failed to consider something or his mind changed and so I appreciated reading his essays as they were and I appreciated his thoughts about how he would write it differently today and and also how um, how the Obama presidency affected the Trump presidency or how these things are compatible or how they were it was it was a really really interesting read it made me think a lot um, as somebody who is politically minded um, I have a degree in political science um, I really found this to be a valuable read and it was a long read some of those chapters because they're his 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 thoughts on the essay and then the full essay were like over two hours long in the audiobook so it'd be quite a marathon but um yeah that was a book that definitely stretched my mind the next question is start line what's a book that you started but never finished um well i've started this book three times and it is battlefront twilight company by alexander freed this is the official companion book essentially to Battlefront, um, Star Wars Battlefront 2015 I think is when that game came out and it's very boots on the ground um, infantry stuff and in the past I really just have not been able to get into this. Um, I love Alexander Freed's uh, Rogue One novelization. I love love Alexander Freed's Alphabet Squadron series so I don't really mind his writing. For some reason this book hasn't worked for me. I obviously own it um, and it's actually signed as well which is cool uh, but it's one I want to get back to and hopefully finish maybe this year. We'll see how it goes but, but yeah this is one I've started but have not yet finished. The next question is Sprint. A book you read really quickly with a question mark and the answer that I came up for this one was what I like about you by Marissa Cantor it is a YA kind of coming-of-age romance thing and uh, I really didn't like it at all um so I listened to it at 2.5 2.6 speed which is you know 0.5 or 0.6 um, faster than I like to listen to things and I did that to get through it so I hope there are other people that really like this book and, and feel that it's for them, but it was not for me. Uh, so that was a book I got through really quickly because I was like, we gotta be done because I refuse to DNF things. The next question is Marathon. What's your favorite long book? And I really struggled with this one because I don't read a lot of long books on purpose because they take forever and you know, you really have to be into them to finish them within a reasonable amount of time. So my copy answer for this one is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by She Who Must Not Be Named. Um, 
by Harry Potter himself. I can't believe he wrote his own stories. But this book uh, is pretty long. Um, it is like 755 pages and I read it and I love it. So and this book, it, this book itself, um, for secret reasons, is very special to me. Um, the secret reason being this, uh, get this signature in the middle. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say this is my favorite long book. Hurdles. The next question is, what is a book that had its ups and downs? And ooh, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. I love the Hunger Games series. It is one of the only like book series that I have like read more than once. I might have read it three times. Um, that never happens for me. Um, so it's a series I love a lot that you know was really foundational I guess in my young adult reading life and the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is a book. It's two books in one book. It has that problem of everybody listening to the teens. Um, and by that I mean like uh, the convenient answers for all of the things that make the Hunger Games. The Hunger Games are created by the teen main characters of this book and I hate that. But there were also some really interesting characters, um, Sejanus, and moments, parts of the games, the way the games looked, like the arena, but it was half bombed. Really interesting, like that was really interesting. Um, and I think the games half was more interesting than the second half of the book. Um, so this was definitely a book that had ups and downs and uh, was a lot going on. I'm really curious to know where Suzanne Collins is going with that one, but yeah. The next question is finish line. What is a book that you're proud to finish? And a book that I love a lot. It's Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. You might be asking, Sarah, why are you proud to finish this book? A book you love so much versus like another book that you struggled to get through and finally did. And the answer is because freshman year of college, I was assigned to read Wuthering Heights over the course of three lectures. So that's like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday in my first year honors seminar and I didn't do that. <laughs> I struggled so bad with the language um, and it just didn't, it didn't click for me. I wasn't given enough time. Um, I wasn't given enough space to understand the book uh, so I never finished it. And when I ended up taking a women in literature Mad Woman, Mistresses, and Monsters class, uh, Jane Eyre was the first book on the reading list, and I was like, oh no, I've walked into a literature class that I am going to hate. And my professor, who was the coolest, um, she's awesome, um, gave us a month to read Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre. We read like a chapter to three chapters per, um, session, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, instead of reading the whole book over the course of the week, we read, you know, chunks, and then we talked about it in class. And I was so proud to finish this book because I never thought that I would love this type of literature. And I do! I do! Oh, oh my god, Jane Eyre! I live, I live for this book. I really do. Um, Jane and Rochester, I just, it's so good. It's so good. Um, and so when I finally finished this book, and not only did I finish this book, but I loved it, I was so proud of myself because um, this class had opened my eyes to a new genre of book that I can love. So hopefully I'll get to re-reading more of this. I want to try Wuthering Heights again, and I also need to read Pride and Prejudice ASAP. The next question is Gold Medal. What is the best book you've read during a readathon? And the Reading Rush 2020 is my first kind of major readathon. Um, hopefully I'll be successful at it, but... Uh, the only other readathon I've done was the Stay at Home readathon by The Reading Rush. And so that was only four days, and um, I read uh, three books in that time. And um, I read Fun Home by Alison Bechtel um, and The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson, and I would say those are my ties for the best book I've read during a readathon. So 
I don't feel like I have much to say about these books. Both of them were good. Um, the Vanishing Stare is the middle book in the Truly Devious series, and at Fun Home is the comic behind Fun Home the Musical and the Bechdel Test, stuff like that. So both of those books were very good. Fun Home was very sad. Yep, the last question in this tag I'm really excited about, and it is Participation Medal. What is an underrated book you wish got more attention? May I bring to your attention Bonds of Brass by Emily Skretsky. I love this book. This book is very good. Um, this book is by Emily Skretsky. It is the first book in the Bloodright, the Bloodright trilogy. Um, it's published by Del Rey. Uh, so these two guys, Etienne and Gao, are at an Umber Empire military training base kind of place. They're both training to be pilots and we find out it comes to light. The gal is no regular Zhou Shmo. Gal is the heir to the whole empire. Uh, and people are not a fan of him at this particular military base because the empire that, um, the Akron or Archon uh, empire where Etienne is from was conquered by the Umber empire. Um, so there was an attempt on Gal's life. And that means that the secret is out and they have to run away. And this book, this book, it's so good. It's incredibly fast paced. I could have done this one for the book you read really quickly because I read this pretty quickly as well. Um, super fast paced, really fun. The characters are so good. Um, there is a twist at the end that I, like jaw was on the floor. Uh, it was amazing. Um, this is kind of a friends to lovers a little bit. Uh, in this book, um, people like to compare it to Finpo from the Star War. So if you're a Finpo fan, this might be a book that you like. Um, I kind of see the similarities and I also kind of don't. So you kind of pull what you want out of it. But I think the world that it's building, that's being built in this series is super, super interesting. And I am so excited to read the second book, which comes out next year, because, <laughs> because it's going to be told from Gal's point of view. And I am a Gal Gal. Gal is my mans. So um, I'm so excited, especially with the twist at the end. Um, anyway, Read Bonds of Brass by Emily Skretsky please. <laughs> and uh, that's the whole tag. That's it. That's it. Just this is turned into a PSA for Pots of Brass because it's really that good. Um, that's all I have for you today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you're watching this the day it comes out or the day after it comes out, I am still doing the reading rush, but I am also camping. So <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to have a blog or vlog up or if I will just recap it after the fact, we'll see. Stay tuned. So that's all.